you own an RV? Are you wanting to get a tax write-off when you jump in that bad boy and drive across the country? Well, I own an RV as well. I should say travel trailer. You got to get it right. But let's talk about ways to deduct it on your tax return. So I've got the whiteboard here to make sense of this because it is a little complicated. So let's start with point number one. If you want to write off your RV, you got to have a business purpose. That's the only way. Now, some of you, that idea just flew out the window and you're going to switch off. But hang with me here. I think you might learn something that could be really exciting for you as an RV owner. So again, whether it's a travel trailer, an RV, if you've got a business purpose, so you're going to drive to a rental property, park it out front, work on your rental property, do some improvements. Maybe you're going to a conference, a trade show. Maybe you're picking up supplies. I've got clients with all these different types of um, business purposes to get in the RV and move across the country to be at a certain place for a business purpose. So I'm going to put that down here as number one, business purpose. Now we can talk about that and we do this with our clients where we've got five tax attorneys here at our office helping clients around the country and we can save you 10 times whatever you're paying us to help tailor a plan to you. But we want to make sure that you've got a business purpose first and foremost. Now once you've got that business purpose, there's two options. You can do mileage, which is really easy. Mileage is 54 and a half cents right now in 2018, sorry and uh, trying to write and say numbers at the same time is tricky. So um, in 2018, it's 54 and a half cents. Uh, it's gonna change every year. So look up the rules. This video might be out for a couple years before I reshoot it. So just double check your mileage rate. So you're driving for business, you get in the RV, you hit the road. Now let's say you've got a towed. Yes, I know what a towed is. That's that towed vehicle you see sometimes behind an RV if you don't know that um, uh, term. So. You can also write off the business mileage for your toad once you get to your location because you might get there and then still need to run around and pick up supplies, meet with clients, customers, who knows what. So any business miles to get to and from your primary home, you're off to the races. Now, notice I put a little caveat in here. This is not your primary residence. So any of you that are full-time RV, watch some of my other YouTube videos, type in Mark Kohler RV, and you can look at some of the more detailed explanations of how you deal with this when the RV is your primary residence, so you're a full-time RVer. But in this example, I'm saying you're not primary residence. So the RV is not your primary residence. Now your second option in this strategy is to do actual. Now in order to do actual, which means you're gonna get to write off depreciation, woo, and you're going to be able to write off the fuel because we know you're getting great gas mileage, right? So I want to do fuel, repairs, maintenance, all this good stuff. That's called actual. So you don't do mileage. You can even write off the insurance, you know, that's for this RV. But the rule is you've got to use the RV for business purposes more than 50%. Now you may say, well, my RV is 100% business. All right, well, I'm going to write off 100% of the actual. But most people are going to go to the national park once in a while, go on a vacation and use the RV. So we're going to look at your total miles uses or day usage and during the year um, and, and make sure we carve out how much of that RV is really business. Now, some people are also renting out their RV, which can allow you to create more business use with an RV as well. Now, that's pretty exciting. So there's some math involved in that. Now, last little trick that's pretty cool. In 2018, there is what's called bonus depreciation. And in the year you purchase a car, uh, the RV, you might even get what's called section 179. So these are ways to write off the RV even faster if you're buying it, new or used. So in the year of acquisition, you get a bigger write-off. Now for some of you that already have an RV, you can still do actual. You just put it in the business and you're off to the races. Or you can use mileage. Now, bottom line, what I want to recommend is you talk to your accountant. And if your accountant starts rolling their eyes and you can't write off your RV and they think it's aggressive or too much of a, um, a red flag item on your return, you have the wrong accountant. This is a very common strategy. It's not too aggressive and you need to upgrade. And I don't care if it's your brother-in-law or your sister doing it on TurboTax in the basement for a spaghetti dinner. Sometimes you need to upgrade. And again, 
as a real a CPA and tax lawyer, some people, oh, I don't want to pay for that. Well, you know what? We're going to save you 10 or 20 times or more when you pay for good advice. So whether it's me or someone else, pay for an upgraded professional that can help you do your tax return. It may be time to upgrade from tax sale or TurboTax if you've got a small business. So it's okay. But um, if your accountant is blowing you off and telling you no, 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 uh, it may be time to make a change. So your RV can be a write-off when you travel. Look at the rules, meet with your accountant, and do it right. Thanks so much for watching that video, and I want to be your source for tax and legal strategies. It's hard enough to live the American dream without being out on the web, on Google, trying to find answers to complex questions and just clicking a mouse, hoping you got it right. My team and I want to be a huge resource to you. The law firm, accounting firm, my education resources on my site, please continue to follow these strategies. I know they'll save you thousands. Now, click here if you want to be a part of my newsletter. It's awesome. Weekly updates and deadlines and strategies and tips. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll love it. And make sure to click the bell icon so you get a little ping whenever there's a new video. And finally, check out my site, marjankohler.com, with all sorts of videos, probably 70 plus videos, 30 plus hours of content that'll save you thousands.